water. You know, why? He's like, why? Why to the whole human condition? And, you know, that's one of the most powerful moments of the whole movie when you just crack away from the script. And, and I think, you know, this is good because if we start to realize that this transparency and this authenticity is, is really a huge part of healing, then, then in terms of interpersonal relationships, whether it's working on projects together or whether it's partnerships or marriages or whatever, that exposure, that, that innocence can only shine through when there's no mask and there's no pretense. And um, I love this line. It was a Dan Fogelberg song, and it's and it goes something like, "And in the time it takes us to look beyond the lies, we could be sailing through each other's eyes." And and it's called stolen moments. But in those stolen moments, when love is caught off guard, it seems we never had to work this hard. It's like there's moments of grace that come flying through us, shining through us, where we're just totally expressive. We're, we're not trying to conceal anything. We're not trying to contain anything. There's glee, there's joy, and it's all there because we are not trying to hold on to the past. We're not trying to hold on to the mask. We're not trying to present something to somebody. You know, it's beautiful. It's like a merge, I feel, right here on, on the seeming set of this From the Bottom Up show is that where you have that moment every week of whether you're going to go zooming into the authenticity, zooming into the connection, zooming into what's most real, or there's the construct of, of having an audience and or of presenting something, and, you know, all that just kind of goes out the window. Good. It's, <laughs> thank God for that. You know, that's what you're, you can see. See, the fans are just waving and screaming there. They like authenticity. They want authenticity. They don't want a, a show. They don't want a pretense. They want to feel your heart. So that's beautiful. And even your tears, they love that too. They love it all. <laughs> There's this like, whenever I think of like that defense, like, no, it's not. Like, it's like, no. I don't know, you know. It's like I get this tightness that comes up here and then when the excitement comes up and I think of it as an abstract, like, okay, great, my heart's breaking open. But I, I also attribute it, I, I don't know if it's me, but I attribute it to the form as well, like, oh, well, <laughs> I'm so scared to say this, like, she's beautiful. Or, you know, like, we had that, oh, man, this is even defense as I say it trying to defend and say I've seen everybody else is beautiful when I'm not experienced but like oh wow this is humiliating <laughs> so she's beautiful when I'm in allowing that hurt thing to open up and I don't know if she's just beautiful because it's a personal desire or because it's Jesus making it so and I need to know before I go in that direction. I don't know what else to say. It's, it's like everyone wants to see the beauty that, that comes from within, the beauty that is always there, that's, that's independent of, of appearances. You know, they, I always love that uh, saying, people say maybe it's a cliche, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But to me, you know, that Jesus said, let thine eye be single. And he was just saying, when, when you have a single vision, when you have a single way of looking at the world, when it's not dualistic or, or multiple, then that's, to me, that's where the beauty is. So it's like, if you're beholding something and you feel that is so beautiful and it's just it it's all pervasive it's it permeates everything then to me that's the that's the convincing job of the holy spirit and i think of that uh, carol king song you got to get up every morning 
with a smile on your face and show the world all the love in your heart. You know, people are going to treat you better. You're going to find, yes, you will, that you're beautiful as you feel, as you feel. You know, if you feel the beauty, then you behold the beauty, but you behold it in everything and everyone. It's not, it's not a beauty with a contrast. It's not beautiful, ugly. It's not a, a, a beauty that has an opposite. Mm. You know, that's the key. If it doesn't have an opposite, if you're, if you're just swept, swept up in it, if you're, you know, if you're going to be intoxicated, be intoxicated in, in beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I can feel just like, like I had this experience many years ago when I was letting go of one relationship where we are wondering if it was happening. And I heard as I drove up to the house, both the new partner was there and, and the old and and I heard you're gonna walk across the room and just give her a kiss on the cheek, the new mm-hmm. one. And I didn't know, but as I walked in the house, the old partner was there and watched me and I had to just say hi, walk by, go to the new one and give a kiss on the cheek. And then as soon as I did that, like something in me just went in this heat. You know how cold I am all mm-hmm. the time? Yeah. It's like it was just like I got so hot for days, like there was some kind of a deep fear of expressing love that would injure somebody else. And I have that same feeling right now. I'm just speaking honestly. It's like yeah. Someone's going to get killed. I know it. I think the heat, the heat comes though from following. You're going to walk across the room. You know, you, you follow and there's heat, there's energy, right. there's love with following. There's not love with analyzing. There's not love with comparing. And there's no heat in, I choose this one over that one. It wasn't that. The, the heat comes when there's this, oh, I, I will follow you. Lord, I will follow you. Whatever you ask me to do, I will follow you. You know my own best interests. I don't. That's why I'm following you and, and going, going fully into that. So, and we trust, too, that, I mean, it, it's, uh, Jesus says that, you you work with specifics as long as you believe in them. So it's not some, some kind of an affirmation thing, you know, where you go around, all is love, all is God, all is one. People have tried to just use that as a mantra, but there's something underneath that is not uh, cleaned or cleared away yet. So that's where the guidance comes in. Of There are specific people. Everyone who's supposed to meet will meet, or you even could say did meet. <laughs> in the script. Uh, there's no accidents. There's nothing at random. There's nothing out of place. There's nothing out of order, you know, in the celestial scheme of things. And there's something comforting about that too. But it takes a lot of trust and faith to really follow the guidance because it's seemingly undoing everything that you believe in. And the ego wants to, wants to scream and rage against even the guidance. You know, there are people that will even dismiss, dismiss God, dismiss spirit, dismiss guidance, because it's far easier for the ego to just hold on to, here's a specific way things are, and that's just the way specifically things are, and yeah, it doesn't want to be undone. That's what was beautiful yesterday, is even just being going up to the monastery and willing to share this with Emily, mm-hmm. not willing, I need to, you know, like. I was so in love with her, like she's more beautiful. And I just felt this deep connection, even wanted to be more affectionate and mm-hmm. just like rubbing her arm. And then when I shared everything and she had all this emotion, it's like she said something like, three years I've waited to feel this love from you. And, and now I feel it that I'm maybe letting you go or something. But it was like, well, this is worth it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, whatever it takes that's what we didn't yeah yeah the letting go was the of the form of the past was the purpose of it all yeah. and then the love yeah love flowers came in but it was when you when you think you're with somebody nobody feels love mm-hmm. in that you yeah. know? okay well <laughs> i've got some you've got people some, ready <laughs> some people that are coming on and will further help with this great expression <laughs>
maybe Pete and Linda, are you there? Standing by in Mexico. How do we get them on the show? Oh, they're there. Here they are. <laughs> 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 Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> for sharing this space with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had a couple questions for you guys, and so our audience knows Pete and Linda have just uh, recently gotten engaged, correct? Yes. <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And um, Linda's come over from Europe and is just been a berry, we call it a berry, a strawberry, someone who's just there to help serve to get strawberry ready and really come deeper into mysticism and wake up. And I had a connection with her over in Europe with Kirsten and Ricky together and we invited her over and Pete has been with us for, what is it Pete, seven, eight years now? About, about eight years. About eight years. And Pete, having been with us for about eight, you've had little dabs and openings with relationship. And now you've, you know, met Linda and gotten engaged. And what I was kind of curious about was, can you share your experience of meeting Linda? And then my deeper question comes after that. So I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can say that um, I'd seen Linda online on Facebook um, from a retreat in, uh, in Europe and, um, and I felt a connection kind of straight away. And um, yeah, there were three, um, well, Linda was going to come to Mexico a couple times and um, it was the second time you were coming and um, I was with you at the time, Jason, and when I heard that I heard the news that she made it as far as Cancun and then she, uh, the plane was delayed and she took that as a sign that she wasn't meant to come. And so she flew back to Holland. <laughs> she, she was so close. <laughs> and, um, Still funny. <laughs> and I felt, yeah, it, just, I, it really hit me. I felt like physically, at the time, like physically sick, like there's something like, oh my God. And it surprised me, even the feeling and um, so then later I heard that she was uh, interested in coming to stay in Mexico, but also strawberry, like just felt the call. And, um, and so, yeah, I still f felt her and um, deeply. And I think you know, at one point I shared with you, Jason, I just had this feeling of like, oh, I want to marry her. I'm going to marry her. And... Um, at the same time, I just didn't know how things were going to come in. And also my experience was I just didn't want to chase any longer because um, in so many years in community too, like I have had so many periods where I've felt like, oh, I, I want to be in relationship. It's something I have never really experienced a, a deep long-term relationship or like this deep kind of relationship since high school, really like that deeper relationship. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I wanted to take my hands off just completely because every time I'd been trying to hold on to something or wanting something, it felt so like such a, I just didn't like the energy of that any longer. I, it was upsetting to try to chase and try to hold on. And, um, so this time it's just like, if this is really meant to be, then I really want to see that, that it's going to happen without my efforting, efforting anymore. And um, so I didn't even really know I was going to go to the Strawberry Festival uh, until one day, um, yeah, it was like a, it was on a, on, a, on a Thursday and then Deanna came in and said, we're feeling you to go to the festival so you can help uh, Susanna and you need to go tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I ended up catching this flight over. It was all very quick, but I can say like, um, still, I didn't really know what was going to happen or how it was going to feel at all. Like I was just going to say, I'm, I'm completely blank. So yeah, when I, when I finally did meet Linda, 
uh, <laughs> at, uh, at the monastery. I remember looking and, I, and it wasn't, I didn't feel a, a, a strong, like huge connection at first. It was like we had a little, a little hug and then she kind of like, okay. And she was off into her function again. I was just like, huh, okay. And um, I remember I met up with Susanna later on and I said, well, that was underwhelming. <laughs> you know, and and uh, so, yeah, but it was just like, you know, through the, through the, the, the festival still just naturally being kind of drawn together um, again and again, I just kind of could feel her as a, as a light in my mind. So I just kind of had to keep on just going towards the light and saying like, what is this? What is this? I, I don't even know. So that was the first intro. <laughs> I can keep on going, but <laughs> so, so I wanted to kind of just prime prime it with that. But my question is, I mean, it's <laughs> how did you make it this long when um, you always had to face a desire for relationship? Because you know, you and I have worked together a lot, and there's always this intense desire that came for relationship, and you just. I kind of want to hear in your words, how did you make it seven years until this came in for you with that desire being so strong? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would, you know, I, there were many times where it would come in like strongly and with emotions with that of like, man, oh, spirit, why aren't you giving this to me? What's happening? What is this that I'm not drawing this towards myself? I don't know what this is. And there would be like an emotion that would really come up with it. But I think always through that real, ex like there was the expressing of it and kind of shouting about it. And then it would be like just a feeling of like, and this mustn't be given right now um, because it's not happening. And and I knew too that I I. I didn't want it so much that I wanted to go back into the world and try to make it happen myself. Like I didn't want to chase after it myself and I knew I couldn't do that any longer. And I really wanted to feel like this is a given, a spirit given thing. So, so show me spirit was, was the experience like each time. And, and then it would be always be like the function that was coming in to pull me through. And I, and I think the, the last main example is when I, I felt a big draw to Susanna when we were together in Monterey, like over a, like nearly a couple of years ago now, and and at the same time, and then she was uh, partnering up with Jeffrey, and I had a lot of emotion coming up at the time with that again, this big wave of like, why isn't this given? But then soon after coming to uh, La Casa, and then I, seemingly I was in a kind of leadership kind of role there, and my mind was so completely used with that at the time that I didn't have space to think of relationship any longer. It was like I was so completely, my, I couldn't go anywhere else. And in those moments, I didn't feel any desire for a relationship either. And it's been that way through the years. Like when I'm so into what I'm doing, then the relationship thoughts aren't actually there in those, in those times. So it's been that way. But I, I kind of feel like the desire, especially in the past year, had lessened so much more when I had just been kind of in the, in the flow of like, I don't know, trusting that I, I don't know, like, I think especially when the leadership things kind of came in more for me, my mind was being so fully used in that way that everything else, that yeah. the desire had lessened so much. You found a space to go to that kept you clean and happy. So. Yeah. Yeah, that I didn't want to chase, no desire to chase anything any longer that wasn't really given. And Linda... You're new to community. You've been here six, seven weeks now. Um, and this arranged marriage came very quickly because some of you might know, I think it was my last show three weeks ago, we actually talked about arranged marriages. And um, David had actually said something to, to Linda in a gathering when she was concerned about whether she should be with a certain partner or not or how should she think about all this. And David gave this beautiful talk about basically the script is written. You need not concern yourself for anything of time and space, including which bodies were to come and go. And then within three or four days, Pete showed up and you, could, you guys could feel that this marriage was being arranged by Jesus for a, a deepening. I was wondering, how is this different for you then? Because you've had relationships before you came into community. Can you feel something different with this than that and just share that experience? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been in relationships before, <laughs> like almost <laughs> constantly. <laughs> and um, so that's quite the opposite. <laughs> you. Um, yeah, it's like stepping back, really, because before it was like, I want, I need, and it was the chase, like all the time, just getting my needs. And now it's stepping back and just watch my mind and feeling that my joy is not in fulfilling my needs, but it's in like letting go and trusting all this and how this will all work out. So that's, it's a major difference. Yeah, it really is. And it's like the connection right away. It was like on a deeper level. It wasn't really per personal. It wasn't like it's, it is Peter, but it's something deeper than that. That's what I felt. Yeah, we've called that the link over the years. And it's a very hard, hard to describe until you've experienced that non-personal mm -hmm. feeling of Jesus arranging an assignment. So. so yeah, I don't, you know, if you have any thoughts about this, that, those are the questions I wanted to ask you guys before I'll go over to Frank at some point, but you sparked with anything? Yeah, it's, I think that's just, there's a big surrender. I heard uh, with both of you speaking, you know, it's like when you are surrendered, it's kind of like the old butterfly story. When you chase after the butterfly with the butterfly net, it goes all over. And then when you finally just sit still in the sunshine and just... Uh, relax and say I am not in charge then yeah what a glorious experience because then you can start to transfer to everything in in your life projects or things that you seem to feel called to do it's more that I am not in charge you know you know do it through me and then you know take me all the way you know into that state of mind where where there's no thought of of doing or it, you've been using that word like arrange you know it's spirit arranged is the opposite of the uh, ego arrangement because ego arrangement is, is like the chase that you both talked about where it's just like such a pursuit and so much energy and work going into that like non-stop push 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 and then and this is uh yeah it's delightful it's it all it just washes away all the uh all the uh, cliches too about relationships where they oh they're hard work and you, you know, it's almost like, you know, they, I mean, people have described marriage even as a ball and chain. I mean, my gosh, you know, that, that's uh, <laughs> describing it as, as a trap, uh, as slavery or something, where actually what, it's who, who's inspiring it, which, which motivation is, is underneath it is the, is the key, mm. really with everything, but including marriage. You know, if it's, if it's inspired, it will be used in the most glorious way that sends out a huge blessing to everything and everyone and as, as will the whole relationship be used in that way and uh, if it's based on need and lack then it's just uh, you know it's an idol and then you you know Jesus says seek not outside yourself for it will fail and you will weep each time an idol falls and so you can see that that's why you want it to be spirit guided and spirit arranged because it's being used as a blessing. And then the ego always is trying to go shift from one idol to the next and looking for some kind of uh, satisfaction through having something, possessing something, mm -hmm. owning something, mm -hmm. or even pursuing something, even the pursuit itself, mm -hmm. you know. And not getting it even yeah. is a thing. Yeah. yeah. So what a blessing. It's, I feel it's a great honor for us to to watch and to hear from you both and yeah you've got a lot to share a lot to give and beautiful. yeah it's great we get to share it with the whole audience world too because we we've all felt that this union was really going to bless the whole world the community in the world because it would stabilize and inspire the mind and many fruits will come of it so yeah thank you <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Frank, how are you doing over there? Because I got a question for you. I'm. I, yeah, I'm unmuted. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, 
Well, well I, get, I, I have a few things, you know, that came up uh, now as you were talking and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, it felt like there's always been, I mean, you know, when uh, there's always been a sign, you know, that this is not going to work. And before, David, you said that, you know, sometimes we, we hear the guidance but we don't want to follow it. And I have to say, maybe there was a bit of that there uh, because if you remember in San Francisco, we could already feel the resistance when Emma didn't come to the restaurant and, you know, and, and, and we talked about it when I was uh, in Mexico and, and I always had the feeling, well, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, they're saying, well, yeah, but you don't understand. There's so much love. <laughs> so I think there was a bit of, you know, hearing the guidance and just not wanting to go there. But I knew that, um, that, you know, eventually, you know, I was always in this wishful thinking, yes, but she may, you know, we may join and this may all work out. And it looked like it this summer. And, and so now, you know, the, 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 you know, never makes, so that love became an idol and then, you know, like you see, the idol fell and now I weep, you know. Maybe I could give everyone a context, Frank, because some people yeah. might have joined my show and not seen the oh, previous. Yes, yes, yes. But maybe uh, Frank and Emma have been paired up for a while and Frank has just been taking deeper and deeper steps with us and even had a spot booked in the mystery school. And then from your calls with Lisa, we're saying, I'm just really happy here in this relationship. I actually... I'm coming to the mystery school out of guilt. I don't want to do that. And then you felt lifted up and happy. And then I just heard yesterday that you had this talk with Emma and I didn't watch your show with Jeffrey, but um, I heard the feedback from it. My question for you is what happened so quickly that you went from, I know this is what it is that's making me happy. And how did you know this relationship is maximized so clearly? Because, um, I mean, the best I can explain it is uh, that it was, it, it was during the conversation I had with Jeffrey the same day that I was, um, we just talked about my, my responsibility, you know, that I was getting really felt pressured again because now we're back in Zurich and am I going to leave and, and, uh, and, and I felt all this pressure again of having to protect her because of her situation and all this. And you know, it became clear in the conversation with Jeffrey that I, where is this going? You know, where is this going? So uh, while we were in France, this wasn't happening because, you know, it was just vacation. And but then as soon as I got back to Zurich, you know, the pressure was on again. And, um, I mean, the pressure started because, you know, that's where I have my, my business and stuff. So anyway, uh, uh, I just knew I have to expose, you know, I have to expose it. And I did. And, you know, and then it, it's, uh, it just happened because I, I exposed, you know, I just exposed all my private thoughts. And, that's beautiful. And then, um, which was, uh, I'm grateful for that, that she then said, you know, I can't. I can't do this then. And then, you know, this, this I, it's sort of gentle for me. So I didn't have to be the one mm. that says, therefore I'm mm. leaving. So, so she, she did that. And, um, do you feel lifted up right now or is it? Well, really right weak? now I feel super sad. Okay. I mean, sad. I feel guilty. I feel lost. I feel, I feel, you know, now encouraged, after the show, you know, I mean, after what you said, David, and, and, you know, that, the whole, that I am, you know, this is another thing that I picked up uh, that was said before is that, oh my God, I don't know how, how to, what it was. I mean, I know what it was, but I can't word enough that, uh, you know, that having, Well, I, I, I don't remember now the exact words, but, but it goes back to what I said before during the show that, 
you know, I, I haven't experienced that, you know, incredible peace of God that I said, you know, I'd give up anything for that. I have experienced many things, you know, that made me stick and made me join in a pretty serious way that, you know, the synchronicities and I know I'm guided, but this, I'd give up anything for that, that I, I don't have. So I'm still there. Okay. I'm giving this up because that's the, that's the guidance I'm feeling, but I'm, but I'm left feeling like crap. Right now. You know, with a lot. Oh, yeah, because David was saying, how can there be guilt? Uh, you were saying, how can there be guilt when you... Do, do you remember what it was you said? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can take it from here. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you for... I think the reason I wanted to bring Frank on was I wanted to share the beauty of both the Holy Spirit coming together, you know, with Pete and Linda, share my own experience and as well as having Frank that that there's a beauty in the maximization too and so yeah. Frank's not at that place though so I don't know if you have anything you want to share. Oh Frank it's just beautiful because I've I feel like since I've known you you've you've have felt guidances and and you have been in touch with them and and you also have had some guilt and shame around certain thoughts and then you were like almost like having a childlike delight at being able to let them up and and talk about them even uh, in the presence of of love and acceptance, and it goes back to uh, the show, the last step where the the clarity process where there's a sense of of sharing, but not trying to cross talk or advise or or analyze or correct, but just there's some something healing about being able to speak about things and and feel like you're not pressured to hide certain things or uh, to try to hold on and protect things, that there's an openness with that. And I really feel like that's, that's the blessing that you're talking about, even when you're able to do that. From what I heard, uh, um, that it happened very quickly. Uh, you were just sharing some things and then that, it just became obvious uh, in a matter of minutes uh, to you, even though you were aware of some things before, it just, you know, it, it became obvious. And, and we're all about uh, having that spaciousness too, to be able to, to let those thoughts up and, and share them for the purpose of releasing them. And, and um, at times we do, uh, have experiences where people will say, no, no, those are important things. And, you know, you should be guilty if you don't do this or, you know, we've all had those kind of experiences, but that's not really what the healing is. The healing is being able to, to come to a greater honesty uh, with and a greater integrity. So thank you for sharing that too, because it's not an easy point, point to navigate when you, you start to, come to an awareness, like, is this the direction that, that my life is going? Is this, is, is this person going to support that, the direction my life's going, and be with me hand in hand in that? Or are, it, does it seem like we have a, a different, um, we're on a different frequency or a different wavelength? Yeah, it's very precious. Yeah. I, I do feel a lot of guilt, you know, uh, because I know I, I'm, you know, I'm following the direction, but, but I, feel, I, I feel a lot of guilt too, because I feel, you know, how, how could I do this to them? And, I, you know, it's, it's there. I know it's, it's going to go away because it's, it's, it's not true, but, but it is there. Yeah. So now I'm at a feeling that I'm thinking, well, I have to get through it. I'm, I'm very, I'm so grateful that, you know, I, I'm, I have all this support. It's mm. just unbelievable. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. There's this section of the course you might find some comfort in. It's called The Branching of the Road. So if you get a chance to read your course book, I okay. think you'll find, find great comfort at this point in that in that section 
Thank you, Frank. Yeah, thank you. Well, I have um, just my last clip with the Seeger Ross thing underneath, but I don't know if you feel to open up to a question, maybe from the audience, or I feel maybe, I guess it's my show, I have to decide. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at Maybe the... I can open it up to, um, if you can pray in your heart, if you feel something really burning that's kind of been triggered by all of this, and we'll just open it up for one question before I show my last clip. And uh, maybe our team will monitor, show me the hands or something. So, if there's no hands too, I can go right into. Oh, there is one there, Julie. Julie. Julie Bergen. Bergen. Bergerel. Julie Bogano. You, you can talk, Julie. I yeah. Hi. Hi, Julie. Hi there. Um. So yeah. Uh, um. Thank you. First of all, I'm so happy to see you all. <laughs> um. I was um. Wondering since you're talking <laughs> about relationships. Um. I'm in a relationship. Um with a man for uh, 10 years, about 10 years. Um, and um, it, it was a very, very uh, um, um, extremely violent uh, for, for a while. And um, it's, it, it's, it's not anymore, ever since I started doing the course, actually. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I, I know that um, I'm not sure. How can you know that to that if you have to continue or not in a relationship? Because it's um, I'm on on this path and and taking it really deeply, more and more deeply, and and he's not at all, at all. He's he's. He sees me and he, he finds it's cute and it, it's, it's good. But, it, it, but when I find myself alone by myself for a while, when he's away, I, it's like I can just dive into the, into the book, into the, the translation of, 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 of David's video. I, I can't just dive, just day and night and end. And I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's, it will become obvious, you know, as you go forward and you feel that opening and you keep going with it and it sounds like you're, yeah, losing track of time and space uh, when you go into it, almost like when a child's playing uh, yeah. and they, they lose track of, of their environment and everything because they're so absorbed in it. Um, that's beautiful that you're giving your mind permission to do that. And then um, it's just been my experience along the way that, that there are things that are very, very obvious. I mean, even when we were just talking to Frank, uh, as Frank mentioned, uh, we, we discussed this up at the Course in Miracles conference up in San Francisco. Uh, a lot of his thoughts and feelings there. And then there were some pretty strong signs and symbols there. And then we continued the discussion in Mexico. Uh, and it sounds like he, there had some time in France. And then when he was there back in, in Zurich in Switzerland, uh, within a span of maybe five minutes, uh, where it just became so obvious in those five minutes. Uh, it, it, it just, there comes a point as you keep on with your faith, and you keep on opening, and you keep on aligning with spirit, that, that it's almost like the decisions are already made, and that you, you just come upon this point in the script where it's just so, so, so obvious. And uh, also what Pete was sharing, you know, because he's, <coughs> he's remained open, and there might have even been a thought coming into community, like, well, there, I don't know if I'll ever have a relationship now. I'm in community now or whatever, but 
for those seven years or whatever, then suddenly this just comes upon and it, and it, it happened and it happened relatively quickly. So I think it's best to just keep focusing on what, what is it that expands me? What, what is it that I can give my whole heart to? What is it that, that where I can pour my devotion fully into it and, and feel the, the direct benefit of that? Uh, if you keep focusing there, then it's, it's more like you're handing your relationship over to Jesus yeah. and saying, you are in charge and you will use this relationship for your purposes for as long as it, it blesses the whole. And, um, and there's something relaxing about that. Yeah. It's, like, it's like handing it over. And I feel like really anyone can do this on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not uh, something you do to, to uh, try to handle a crisis. It's more like that's the way that you stay in the joy is by continually saying, be you in charge. I give this relationship to you. Or I invite the Holy Spirit, you know, in to be with me and stay with me. Those thoughts are, are very freeing and releasing. And, and there's so many blessings that come out of, out of that. So, yeah, it starts to take the pressure off of trying to kind of figure out a, a situation when, you know, really you're just staying with your devotion and trusting that it will be made very obvious. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay. Well, the original reason why I was showing these clips is starting to come back to me now that I... <laughs> it's back. I just... There was like a devastation for not knowing how to heart crack open, but now that that's happened, we can play the second clip. And now what's happened in here is, is uh, Endor has, Ender has all this guilt and emotion that he destroyed. What's the word when you, it's like genocide, yeah. when he kills a whole species or whatever, genocide, maybe that's humans, I don't know. And he feels this telepathic connection with the last remaining queen of the Formix that happened to be on the planet he's on. And he follows his heart to go out and have a meet with her. And the quote that I want to read, really, before we watch it, is because I was looking up the word defenselessness. And here's the quotes that I found. There is a child in you who seeks his father's house and knows that he is alien here. This childhood is eternal with an innocence that will endure forever. This child needs your protection. He is far from home. He is so little that he seems so easily shut out, his tiny voice so readily obscured, his call for help almost unheard amid the grating sounds and harsh and rasping noises of the world. This child is your defenselessness, your strength. He trusts in you. He came because he knew you would not fail. He whispers of his home unceasingly to you, for he would bring you back with him that he himself might stay and not return again where he does not belong and where he lives an outcast in a world of alien thoughts. So with that quote in mind, let's just watch this last clip of him facing his guilt thoughts with the alien queen and the child, the, the last child. I just feel like for me, I was trying to talk about defenselessness, but just being able to practice it on the show, that clip touches me even more. So let's all just take the Christ child home today. Thank you everybody for being on the show. <laughs>